Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to give us the value plays after giving us the high-powered guys that he's going with on Tuesday. we got to figure out a way to get them all in there. That's what today's for. What's up, Tom? I'm doing good. You know, we need these cheaper guys to round out our lineup, and we're looking at a few players who actually have a good amount of touchdown equity. And that actually is exactly how we're going to start off because you like Zach Moss this week for the Buffalo Bills, priced at $5,200. Immediately saw red zone work in favor uh, of Devin Singletary in week one. And Moss certainly has a chance to score a touchdown here in week two. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, those red zone touches, those are the highest upside touches that we want to be targeting. He's cheaper than Singletary in week one. Zach Moss had a total of nine rushing attempts, but seven of them came inside the 20, and three of those seven came inside the five-yard line, compared to Singletary, who only had one total touch inside the 20. Uh, you know, we did see Moss score via the air in week one, so things are kind of setting up for him to take over that Frank Gore role from last season, where they're using Singletary inside the 20s, and then when it gets to the goal line work, it comes down to Zach Moss. Uh, you know, we're not going to be seeing 20 total touches out of him uh, on an only 45% uh, snap share, what we saw from last week, but the high upside touches are there, and we're getting a great matchup against the Dolphins, who, at least after week one, are the lowest rated rush defense that we have on number fire. So, you know, $5,200 for a player who could see 9, 10 touches inside the 20, sign me up. $5,200 for Zach Moss, and you're banking on the touchdown. But that's okay, because so many of those touches could come in the red zone. We saw him score through the air last week. Wouldn't be surprising to get in the end zone on the ground here in week two. Moving over from running back, we get to wide receiver, and that brings us to the Lizard. Alan Lazard, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. I, I don't ever know what to think of Alan Lazard, because Marquez Valdez-Scantley, he had a big play in week one. Then Alan Lazard did the same a little bit later on. The Green Bay Packers offense, still trying to figure it out outside of Devontae Adams. But you like Lazard at 5,600 here this week, Tom. Why is that? Like you said, they're trying to figure out the offense outside of Devontae Adams. We know the rushing game is led with Jones, but after Devontae Adams and the passing game, is it going to be MVS? Is it going to be Lazard? And this is what I want to bank on, the cheaper receiver who has some touchdown upside. You know, last week, only four targets for him, one of which came in the red zone, which he converted into a touchdown, which is great. But more importantly, I want to be targeting this game, and I think getting a cheaper uh, you know, exposure or cheaper receiver in this game is interesting. Versus the Lions, this opened up at 46 and a half. It's now up to 49 and a half. You know, we saw the Lions kind of collapse on defense late in the game. We saw the Packers have, you know, kind of a bad defensive game despite the fact that they scored 40 plus offensive points. So if Devontae Adams is clear number one and number two is going to be fluctuating every week for the Packers, I'm taking the cheaper guy with Lazard. Let's go with the value. We don't know who's going to be the number two wide receiver in Green Bay on a consistent basis, so give us whichever player is cheaper. Against Detroit, who, like you said, blew it last week against Chicago, Aaron Rodgers may have a field day. So let's get a small piece of this offense here for $5,600. Let's move over to tight end now, getting all the skill positions in, and that brings us to Johnny Smith. Smith is $4,900 for the Titans in week two, facing off uh, against Buffalo, as we mentioned earlier. Smith was a major part of the offense in week one, replacing Delaney Walker officially as the starter here in 2020. Walker, uh, currently a free agent. But Janu Smith has been someone we've been waiting to break out, waiting to be able to rely on. Why is this week that opportunity for all of us? I think everything is kind of coming together. First of all, we have a great price tag under 5,000, like you said, sitting at 4,900. I don't think it's going to stay there too long. So I want to get it before the price rises. He had the third most targets in week one, uh, the third highest target share. You know, we don't normally see a player under 5K who's seeing six, seven targets, especially at the tight end position. So I want to be going back to him this week. I had a few shares of him uh, on Monday night. He caught a TD in the red zone. We have the Titans as home favorites with a 25.5 implied team total against the Jaguars. Like everything is lining up. You know, I don't expect Corey Davis to be that consistent on a week to week basis. AJ Brown had a little bit of a down game. And if it's just kind of going to be a little bit jumbled in the receiving options for the Titans, I'm going with the cheaper guy again, like Lazar, who has red zone equity and is seeing the targets. When all else fails, Go with the guy that's cheapest. That's Janu Smith, $4,900 under 5K for a player that's going to be very involved, at least we hope, inside the red zone this season. There you have it. Those are the value plays to pair up with the top guys from earlier this week, and that's how you're going to win a little bit of money here on FanDuel. Tom, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Same to you. 
All right, tomorrow Jim Sonis will join me as we're talking about which teams we are stacking in preparation of week number two. For Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching, and enjoy Thursday Night Football.